Well, I'm at the Polish Social Club in Southampton with members of the local Polish community and those who have questions to raise about the effects of immigration on the city. And we'll also be getting reaction to the points raised from politicians. Tom Brake is the Liberal Democrats' deputy commons leader. The Conservative MP George Hollingbury is the parliamentary aide to the Home Secretary, Theresa May. Gerard Batten is a UKIP MEP and the party's immigration spokesman. And John Denham is a Southampton MP and a former Labour Home Office Minister. Let me come to you first, Shemek Turk. You came here from Poland. Yes. Why, why did you come and how welcome do you feel? Well, um, I think I like every poll. I came here to seek decent life and uh, professional development. And I found it. I found and achieved all my goals right now. I'm living happy lives and happy life. And to be honest, I was welcome here. Nothing bad come to me from English people and I'm I feel quite I felt quite welcome welcome and I still feel quite and, welcome. And how do you feel listening to all the the fears and the debate around Romanians and Bulgarians? Well the fears will be always when something unknown is coming really so uh, I truly understand those fears but I don't share it I think the market will um, stabilize itself so uh, Nigel Guppy um, did too many people like Schmidt come to Southampton I think that what's happened is that we are naturally a tolerant society but we're reaching the stage now where the pot's full and nobody seems to be able to stop it and that's now creating a situation where British people are starting to react in the way that like we saw on there, just the, the, the production just now. What do you mean the pot's full? Well, we, have a, we don't have an unlimited ability to be able to let all these people come into the country. We are continually being told by the politicians that they're trying to put new policies in now to, restrict, to restrict immigration. But most of the immigration is coming from within the EU and there just is not enough accommodation for these people and, and the resources just cannot spread that far. I'm a letting agent and I see it every day. Michael Mills, yeah. what, what is the effect on Southampton? Well, the infrastructure can't keep it. Can't, can't, we can't hold it. It's too much. But not only that, everybody you meet, it's a subject. Everybody you meet says, why, are they, why, is, why can an immigrant come to this country after they've paid taxes worked all their lives, right, and they have to qualify for benefits, yet someone can come in here and in a few weeks they can grab the whole pot. Okay. They can take everything out, cancellation, everything. They can put their children in schools, jeopardising yours. They don't only do that, they claim benefits, right? More benefits than any of us can quite claim for in, in a lot of cases. How, how does that make you feel, listening to those two views? Well, this is, uh, I don't believe it's true. I think most, uh, let me explain. Uh, I think most of Poles, I would risk even 95%, are working and putting money into the Poles. There is this small I don't amount, with that. small group. No, I don't disagree with that. All right, I, I see. There is this small group who actually claims benefits. I think uh, some conditions and terms should be um, re um, retaken. When I, when I came, came here, uh, it was like, you had to work 12 months before you claim any benefits. And I think that was a fair and square, really, absolutely. That's how it should be. And okay. that's how it should be. Marjena, we saw you briefly in the film, in, in, the, in the school. How, how do you feel listening to that view? To be honest, I can't believe it, because to be honest, uh talking about people that I know. I've never claimed any benefits, and also Same I believe here. that people came here just to work. They are underpaid, or they earn less money, or little money. That's because they claim benefits, but it's not their aim just to come here and just living on benefits, believe me. OK, let's, let's bring in the politicians straight away. Um, George Hollingbury, um, wh where are you in this debate? Um, is, uh, is, is, is are Nigel and, and Michael right? I think the first thing is, uh, there was a comment that most of the immigration comes from Europe, and that just isn't true. 55% of the immigration comes from out with the EU, about a third comes from the EU, and 15% is returning Britain. So, first up... But when they talk about the pressure on this city, are they right or wrong? Well, I think what we, the, the government, as you know, and I think you've made clear in many of your broadcasts so far, has seen a fall of net migration of a third already. So the coalition is doing a great deal to crack down on immigration. I think... You're not really we, answering my well, question. We, we can, simple. Are they right they or wrong? I think they would do. Say to ask, ask me again. 
Are they right or wrong when they talk about the pressure on this city? Well, there is certainly pressure on many of our cities, and I think what we can conclude is that whilst a lot of us can agree that migration is a good thing for this country, uncontrolled migration is not. Hence all the Coalition's policies to reduce migration. John Denham, are they right or wrong? What's certainly true is that the number of people who came in a few years in the beginning of this century was quite unprecedented. I mean, this was a city that had dealt with immigration from Afro-Caribbeans, from India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, over years very, very successfully. We actually got more people in two years than all the people who had come from all around the world in the previous 55 years. And was that, that too many? The and that's, that's not that you yeah, didn't. But that's, that's, that's why the challenge is there, and that's why you hear the thing. So with the Polish community and others, individually popular, by and large, respected, seen as hardworking, not scrounging on benefits, but if you have that number of people in such a short period of time, it does have a big impact on things like housing, on schools and so on. But so is the pot full? I mean, that, that's how they feel. Is the pot it, full? It, it's perfectly clear you cannot have immigration coming in at the rate you had in that period of time. It's not coming in in those numbers now, not just because of recent measures, but for measures over the last four or five years. So immigration over time, as we've had over a long period of time, this city's been built on it but too much in too short space of time, then you do get all sorts of stresses. You picked up some of those in the film. John, didn't, didn't Labour open the floodgates deliberately? If we had known, and you've got to, we've accepted this, when, when we went to the best experts in the country at one of the world's best universities and said how many people would come, they said 15,000, right? And it was based on that decision. Now, that was completely wrong. Let's, let's not go and, over and, the history and, and, and so, no, right so, 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 so let's, let's, let's accept that had we known the numbers that were going to come, we never would have taken Ger that decision. Ger 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 um, the, the numbers are too great. We're adding about a million people to the population every five years or so, which means we have to build the equivalent of a city the size of Birmingham. Now, it's gone down slightly because of measures that have been taken, but all of these parties are actually in favour of more countries joining the EU. Uh, and there was, This was debated in the European Parliament last week. Kosovo, Turkey and three others, who have a population of 88 million. When those countries join, and all of these three parties support that, then another 88 million so will have So you right still think there. millions of people are going to come in? Of course they are. All right, Tom Brake, I'll come to you in a minute, but I just want to bring in Paul, Paulina. Um, Trevena, now, um, what, what do you think about the, you know, the, the, the worries that you've just heard about lots more people coming in to, to Britain, is, I mean, and, and, and their contribution? Is it, is it right? Is it factual? Well, I can fully understand the concerns about lots more people coming in because the truth is nobody can give any estimates on how many people might come in. I should and say I, you're Polish yourself or Polish I'm, and British. I'm <laughs> Polish and British, yes. I'm half Polish, half English. Um, yes, and I've come here as well a few years ago, having lived in Poland for almost 30 years and having lived in Britain as a child. But that doesn't matter <laughs> at this point. But what I wanted to say is I, I fully understand all the concerns and I do agree that some control of migration is necessary because no, as has been mentioned, no country has an unlimited capacity to um, accept uh, migrants. However, what I would very strongly like to object to is um, that recently in the media there's ha there has been a lot of very negative campaigning around migrants that are already here. Uh, a lot of talk about them living on benefits, a lot of talk about them abusing the system. And I think this is also some something where we need to find some balance because this is simply not True. They Tom Brake, your, your leader made a speech recently about this as well. I mean, why, why are you getting into the immigration debate? I thought you were all, well, you know, much more liberal when it well, comes to immigration. Be, because I think uh, we've heard tonight that what people want is for politicians to be open and be able to debate this. So are you worried exactly about Romanians and Bulgarians as well? I, I'm worried that we, we are a very tolerant nation, I think, as the gentleman said earlier. And I think the... To, to maintain that tolerance, we've got to make sure that if there are abuses in the system, that we deal with those. So, for instance, restoring the exit check so that we know something we, Liberal Democrats have been campaigning for for nearly 10 years, so that we know how many people have come to the, into the country and subsequently left, so that we know what the scale of perhaps illegal immigration is. That's a very positive thing that we, we as a government are doing, but also looking at employers. The fact that, unfortunately, many employers will use people who are illegal immigrants, and we need to address that as well. Michael, is this reassuring you when it comes to not, the new, the new entrance? Not one bit. Well, what do you want to hear? Because you ask them a straight question, they won't tell you the answer straight. There's either a yes or a no. It's maybe, perhaps, or we'll look at this. That's all they ever say. They, do, they sit in the parliament, they don't do damn things. Well, what do you want them to do about I Romanians and Bulgarians coming in? Bulgaria, the rest of the world, is not just the Polish community. There's some nice people here. 
Some. No, just that's a relief. Right. Yes. No, <laughs> when these Romanians and Bulgarians come here, you're going to have a problem. You haven't seen crime yet, but you will. Well, that's quite an allegation. Hang on. Um, hang on. Well, no, I want, to, I want to bring in a Romanian. Hang on. You've, you've, had, a, you've had a good say, Michael. Hang on. I want to bring, I want to bring in a Tudor Vilken. You're yeah. from Romania. What do you make of that? Yeah, it's a bit offending, isn't it? You know, to be... I mean, I, I feel that this is quite a strong claim that there's going to be a lot of crime. I came here four years ago and I haven't committed a crime, paid all my taxes, you know, I mean, higher education and all that, you know, and uh, it's quite a swiping uh, generalization to say, oh, oh, they're going to come. And it has this undertone of criminalizing the migrant, you know. They're going to come, they're going to, you know, they're like, like viruses, you know, they're going to come and just feed of the host. In reality, I think the situation, I think that the whole scare about the Romanians and Bulgarians is uh, sort of, uh, has, the has, a has as a foundation this false historical equivalency with the 2004 wave of migration, but the situation I feel is completely different. I think that even, I can speak from experience, going back to my country, asking people, how do you feel about migrating? Nobody is uh, at this point, you know, wishy-washy, thinking that they're gonna come here and they're gonna find gold and whatnot. Everybody's thinking this is sort of like an end, like, uh, like starting your own business. George, um, do, do, do you agree with that basic tenant that there's a lot of scaremongering going on? Yes, I do. I mean, on, but on are the you whole, playing it, into it? I, I really don't think the Conservative Party is. It seems to me that we have gone bent over backwards to say that we're not going to predict numbers. We simply don't know what they're going to be. We've got to have numbers at some stage. Well, the use of numbers is to predict where demand might be. We can't do that at the moment. But yes, it seems to me that there is no reason to suspect that those people who are motivated enough to get on their bikes, to quote a phrase, and come across to the UK are going to do anything other than look to look after their families, earn money. And I doubt very much that huge numbers of them are going to go on to benefit. It's they're looking to earn money. This, this whole immigration argument is predicated on a false premise, is that we should have, and it's desirable to have, open borders. Now, if I deal with two points a gentleman made there from Romania, the BBC did a, a study uh, which said, and, and a poll within Romania and Bulgaria, and their own figures indicate that about half a million people are seriously thinking about coming. No, no, now, no, absolutely no, untrue. Now, that's we, not we, it's an invention. That is based on a poll. It's not a fact. Well, it's, it's, it's an estimate. It's, a, it's, uh, it's an, an estimate. estimate. But then again, look how wrong the government's estimates were in 2014. Other people right. But the, the gentleman's <laughs> second point about talking about criminalisation, for example, the problem with this open borders policy is we don't just get people that we might invite to come because they've got skills that we want and they're people that are going to come into jobs that we can't fill. We have an open border to anybody and even if we know people are criminals, John, we cannot stop them coming. There, 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 there are, there are, there are, are a that. million Britons working in the rest of the EU. And when Gerard says, 1. let's 4 million. have 1. No, 4 million. Border, no open borders, what he's saying is that those so young know. people, including young people from Southampton families who want to go and work in, in the rest yes, of Europe, if, if you... won't, won't be able to do so. You've had your say. Yeah. Now, what should we, we should be doing is we should be taking practical measures. People don't just get on coaches and on planes on spec. If people come here from Romania or Bulgaria, it will be because they're recruited by employment agencies that are offering jobs. And what the government should be doing is, find, is, finding, is find, finding out which those agencies are and where they're directing them. We saw an example of the care workers on there, and they should be going to the employers now and saying, can I if you don't, add, if you don't very briefly, you know, we're in the last wage, you I think you're going to do this. What, what we are doing, of course, is we are, we've boosted very significantly the number of apprenticeships, because one of the problems I find with employers is they simply can't get the people yeah. with the skills. I'm so afraid on that, bringing no, back I'm really sorry. We're going to have to wrap it up. News. Uh, thank you all very much indeed for joining us tonight. We're out of time. Uh, that's all from Southampton for now. Back to you, Kathy. Thanks, Chris. Getting pretty lively there. After the break, a virus that's unusually dangerous to humans. The World Health Organization's verdict on the new strain of bird flu, which has now been found outside the Chinese mainland.